Grand Rapids police are investigating another deadly shooting. 911 emergency. Hi, y'all. I need medical attention. I need everybody. I just made a big mistake. Investigators tell us a man was taken into custody and has been named a person of interest in the case. At 24, Marissa had everything she'd ever prayed for. A loving life partner, a bouncing daughter, and a son, and a supportive family. Or at least that's what appeared to her friends and family. What many didn't know was that she was in a relationship and was finding it difficult to leave it. Just as the news of her third pregnancy came out, one day, her family received the news of their daughter passing away. Police had responded to a 911 call and went to her apartment to find her deceased. No one had ever expected that someone so close to her could do this to her. And that too, when she was expecting a child. Who was this man? How was she related to Marissa? And why did he take her life? Stay tuned as we dive deep into the story of the 24-year-old Marissa Valdez, who lost her life while she was carrying another and in the hands of someone she believed would never hurt her. Marissa Valdez lived an average life, but she knew how to make every moment special. She lived with her partner in Grand Rapids, Michigan. Her family and close friends also lived near her. Her mother and siblings always knew her to be loud and full of life. She was a family person and would prioritize her family over everything. If she had a family outing planned, she would drop everything to spend time with her dear ones. She also had her own family. Her two children were the apples of her eye. Her daughter was two, and her son was three years old. Although Marissa was a young mother, she tried her best to give her children the best life. She was working as a full-time medical assistant. However, she wanted to have financial freedom and also wanted to have something of her own. With that vision, she was saving up to have her own online boutique someday. At the time of the unfortunate incident, Marissa was expecting her third child and was four months pregnant. Her partner was also 24 years old. His name was DeLeon Jaishan Franklin, and he was the father of both those children and the one Marissa was carrying. They had been together for a little over four years. Even though the two went along very well, Marissa's family saw how the two had completely contrasting personalities. Marissa was loud and outspoken, while Franklin was very quiet and reserved in nature. He was also socially awkward and would avoid socializing whenever he could. Who knows? Maybe they went along because the two had complementary traits, where one completed the other, where they lacked. At gatherings, Franklin often hung back, not used to a large, love-out-loud family like Marissa's. Marissa's family loved Franklin because he was very polite and respectful towards them. He cared for their daughter and grandchildren, and they couldn't have asked for a more responsible life partner for Marissa. They knew that this match was made in heaven, and were just waiting for them to tie the knot sometime in the near future. It's very quiet, but respectful, said Abram, and the family worked hard to include the man they called Day-Day. However, things didn't remain the same, especially after the birth of their second child. The honeymoon period between the two lovebirds had just ended, and the problems began surfacing one by one. As both of them were very young and didn't have a defined career, they were struggling financially. On top of that, having two children also pinched on their savings. The struggle became more prominent when the babies grew up a little. Sadly, Marissa was the only working person in their family. She alone provided for her children and her partner. Franklin mostly stayed home with the children, while Marissa worked full-time as a medical assistant and dreamed of one day running her own online boutique. Franklin never seemed too bothered about Marissa's sole contribution to their family income. In fact, during both pregnancies, she worked tirelessly all day, all week, and had to work up until the day of her delivery. Franklin never went out to earn and give her some relief. He also never seemed much bothered to be surviving on her income. And the stress eventually caught up to Marissa, being the sole provider of three other individuals, one of whom is perfectly capable of contributing equally, was taking a toll on her both physically and mentally. 
She spoke to Franklin and decided to break up, and they did. But then, they reconciled. And then the stress got to her once again. Marissa broke up with him again, but they promptly got back together. This happened twice. It seemed as if both she and Franklin couldn't live without each other, and wanted to make it work despite their issues getting bigger every day. Otherwise, why would they get back together repeatedly? If there were warning signs in the young couple's relationship, it seems everyone missed them. The pair had broken up and gotten back together twice, but Marissa never reported violence, not to the police and not to family and friends. We missed everything. If there were signs, we missed it. But everyone has a breaking point, and Marissa had hers too. In September 2021, she seemed to have reached her tipping point. She understood that no matter how many times she broke up with Franklin, he was never going to get a job or take financial responsibility for the family. She knew that after she came back multiple times, Franklin knew that she would continue to give him more chances. So he simply waited out their fights and did nothing to improve his ways. Marissa knew that this relationship wasn't going anywhere. By leeching on her, Franklin was also reducing her possibilities of ever opening her own business. There simply was no money to save. Marissa was sick of their constant arguments, and this time, she decided to break free from this relationship one final time. And so she did. But she didn't know that this would cost her way too much. On September 8, 2021, Marissa and Franklin were arguing about money, which was their final argument. She told him that it was over and she couldn't do this anymore. At first, Franklin thought she was joking, but after some time, it became apparent to him that Marissa was serious this time. As things were too heated at that moment, Franklin walked out of their apartment, but he returned after some time. He wanted to talk things out with Marissa. He wanted to fix things between them because he knew that Marissa and his two children were all he had in his life, and he couldn't envision a life without them. He also knew that he wouldn't be able to pay child support for three children because he neither had any money nor any skills to earn some. So convincing Marissa to stay in the relationship was the only option for him. By this time, Marissa had cooled down significantly, but as Franklin started the conversation, she was angry once again, and the two started arguing. The situation escalated very fast, and before anyone could stop him, Franklin pulled out his gun and fired at Marissa nine times. She lost her life instantly, and the shocking part is that their two small children were there when he did it. For hours now, friends and family of the victim have been gathered on the other side of this apartment building where it took place. It was just inside where police say the 24-year-old woman was found to death earlier this afternoon. The call coming in around 1.30. That's when officers responded here to the Oakview apartment complex located in the 1400 block of Burke Avenue. Police say they found the victim with multiple gun wounds inside the apartment. Franklin finally calmed down after Marissa's passing. He looked at her body and finally came to his senses. He then understood the damage he had done. He had taken the life of the woman he knew he couldn't live without. He felt guilty, and he called 911 to report his crime and turn himself in. From his 911 call recordings, it's apparent that he was in a state of panic and asking for help to arrive because he had made a mistake. 911 emergency. I, um, I need medical attention. I need everybody. I just made a big mistake. What's your name? My name is Dalian Franklin. Oh, I'm sorry, it's what? Dalian. How is that spelled? And then he told the dispatcher what he'd done. I killed my girl. You killed your girlfriend? Yes, I did. She helps us. At this point, he was talking to himself more than he was to the dispatcher, and he sounded seriously regretful. I cannot believe this is happening right now. I cannot believe it. I can't believe it all. I cannot believe it. He was groaning over the call and calling for his mother by the time the police came. Uh, 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 
Police arrived at the scene and cleared the apartment. As the first responders walked into their home, they found Marissa's lifeless body lying on the ground. Our officers responded to that and upon arrival um, located a female victim uh, in an apartment who appeared to be deceased as a result of gunshot wounds. Um, currently, our major case team is on scene investigating. They arrested Franklin immediately. After a thorough check, the officers concluded that the neighborhood was not at risk. And at this point, we don't have any reason to believe there's any further threat to the community. Although staff members of the apartment complex were present at the crime scene, no one was ready to speak to the officers or give any information to the news reporters. Police carried on with their investigation quietly and collected evidence that could help during the trial. Another team of police brought Franklin to the police station to question him. At first, he claimed that he had taken Marissa's life in self-defense. He said when they were arguing, Marissa had reached for the weapon first. The two began to tussle as he tried to pry the gun off her hands. Fired at one point, and the bullet hit Marissa and claimed her life. DeLeon Franklin initially tried to say as the couple struggled over the he accidentally his girlfriend at least three times. But there was no evidence that Valdez had ever reached for the gun, and no sign that the sh accidental, especially since Franklin unloaded a lot more than three bullets into the woman with whom he shared a home and two young children. But the police didn't believe any of it. Marissa's body had nine bullet wounds, and he couldn't have fired at her nine times by accident. They continued to probe him for the truth, and eventually, they managed to break him. Franklin admitted that he snapped during the argument, and his years of pent-up anger took control of him. He fired at her before thinking twice. Police say nine 40 caliber bullets struck the young mother as her children slept within arm's reach, but theirs were not the only heartbeats in that room. He claimed that Marissa always made him feel like he wasn't good enough. Franklin later told police he and Valdez had been under a lot of stress, had been arguing all the time about their relationship, about money. He said he felt like nothing he did was ever good enough for Valdez. He also claimed that Marissa was not faithful in their relationship and was talking to another man behind his back. He added that he didn't want to be burdened with child support. He also mentioned that one of his biggest fears was not being able to see his children all the time, but having to pay child support. He also said that he felt Marissa was only in this relationship because he was there to support her when she was out there earning bread for the family. He said she was only with him because he took care of their children and was a nice person overall. He added that he had Marissa and his mother in his life and had no one else, and he didn't want to lose one of them which is why he went back to fix things with Marissa that day, which of course ended in tragedy. He mentioned too that Valdez and his mom, Franklin's mom, were the only two people in his life. He said that he would often get these thoughts and they plagued him. He was battling them for a long time and he just lost it that day. One point in his two hour police interview, Franklin told detectives his life had been going crazy and he had felt, quote, something like demons on him. On the day of the murder, Franklin told police Marissa had become angry, was yelling at him and reaching for the gun he kept close by because he said he was paranoid about break-ins. Although he might have been letting his insecurities take control of his thoughts, he eventually was influenced enough by those toxic thoughts and had done the unthinkable. And now, he couldn't even reverse it. He told the officers that he didn't even remember firing so many times after the first bullet left. Franklin told detectives that after the first, which he claimed was accidental, he blacked out and could not remember firing the next eight rounds. But the police knew that he was lying and pressed charges on him for homicide and attacking a pregnant woman. After waiting for months, on June 27th of 2022, Franklin was finally sentenced to 25 to 50 years in prison. Rapids man who shot and killed his pregnant girlfriend will spend decades behind bars. Today, DeLeon Franklin was sentenced to up to 50 years in prison for a second degree murder and a concurrent 15 to 30 year sentence for a pregnant individual causing miscarriage. As it stands right now, you will spend more time in prison than you've been alive. 
the judge said. Marissa's family was present during the trial. They broke down when the verdict was announced. They had a message for Franklin, and they spoke directly to him in court. This monster not only took a mother, but a daughter, a friend, a best friend, a little and big sister, an aunt, a cousin, a sister-in-law, a co-worker, and a potential wife to a real man. One of Valdez's four brothers, Nico Valdez, said at the sentencing hearing. He claimed that no matter how bad the situation between the two had become, Franklin had no right to take Marissa's life. I'm here to say that I'm not scared of you, DeLeon, and neither was Marissa, Nico Valdez said. I dare you think you have the right to just end her life and take her away from her own kids and family. Your life is so bad, you should have just left. See a real man walk away with his head held high. You don't deserve my sister, you never did. He added that his sister loved Franklin so much that she carried that love with her to her grave. You want to know what she did that made her the most courageous person that ever lived? She loved you. She loved you. She loved you to death. Literally, Nico Valdez continued. She took her love for you with her to the grave. Franklin apologized to the Valdez family for taking away their daughter and said that he knew he made an emotional decision that had altered their lives forever. I want to say that I'm sorry to everybody. I definitely made an emotional decision and I definitely have to live with it every day. Marissa's family managed to find some semblance of justice through Franklin's sentence. However, they're worried about Marissa's children's future. They're staying with Marissa's mother for the time being. With both their parents gone, the two babies will have a difficult childhood. Not to mention that the gruesome incident took place right before their eyes. And they will grow up with the memories and carry the trauma in their hearts forever. Marissa's family has lost her, but they believe that many around the world can take lessons from her case. She could have left Franklin when she saw that he was showing no signs of taking responsibility for his family. She could have talked to him calmly at the beginning and not let the bitterness build up over the months. Maybe if they could come to a middle ground, the relationship could survive. Or perhaps if Marissa could walk out of the relationship safely, and take shelter with her family, she would survive, and the two little children wouldn't leave both their parents at such a tender age. When reporters arrived at Marissa's house to speak to her family members, they found her mother, Nicole Abram, playing with her little granddaughter. Hello. Ah, you say hi? Look, turn around. Grandma's got you. Say hi. <laughs> Nicole recalled Marissa as a bubbly and funny woman and said that she was a loving mother to her babies. I called Marissa my spitfire child. She was funny. She was really funny. She was loving and caring and great mother. As the reporter playfully asked Marissa's kids how old they were, they looked at the camera, flashed the biggest grin, and told him their ages. How old are you? Four. I'm 18. These little angels probably didn't even know what had happened to their mother. Marissa's mother, Nicole, had told her grandchildren that their mother was now in heaven. However, she had to hide the most important detail from them, why she was in heaven. It would be a difficult conversation for her to have with the children when they grew up. No child expects to hear that their father took the life of their mother. <laughs> the babies would grow up. They know mom, I'm in heaven. What do you... What do you say about their dad? I don't even know what to tell them about them. Nicole felt an overwhelming grief whenever she thought about the details of the case. She didn't understand how Franklin could have fired at her so many times, even when he was enraged. And that too, in front of their own children. He shot her nine times. Why would somebody shoot them many times with their babies, right? She was also upset thinking about her unborn grandchild. Not only did he, <laughs> she had my grandbaby, and the babies were in the room when it happened. She recalled the day of the incident. After receiving the news, she rushed to her daughter's apartment. The scene upset her, and she tried to enter the building to ensure her grandchildren were okay. I don't 
want her to be by herself. I need to be with her. But the officers had started the investigation and so wouldn't let her get inside. And the officer helped me. She's like, I'm a mom too. It's okay. You can't go in there. The police are, she's not by herself. I said, you please let me go. She finally spotted her grandchildren standing there with Franklin's mother. Reportedly, he had called his mother to tell her what he'd done right before he'd called 911. Nicole rushed to collect the babies and keep them safe. Franklin's mother knew that her son was guilty, and she knew that their family was now broken forever. Nicole reiterated that Franklin was a polite and respectful man, and they had never anticipated he was capable of something like this. They lovingly called him Day Day, and she said that if the police told her someone else had taken her daughter's life, she would believe them. The Day Day that I knew, I couldn't see him doing that. If they would have told me at the time it was somebody else, that's what I would have believed. I would have never believed it was him. So? He fooled me. Nicole mentioned how she was taking care of her family without complaining. She took care of him, her babies, herself, kept a full-time job, had insurance. She, and he never did anything. She added how Franklin never did anything to contribute to their family. He never did anything. Why didn't he just shoot himself if he didn't want to be around her? Prosecutor Rachel Wussman deals with domestic violence homicides and she thoroughly studied Marissa's case. She said that domestic violence cases were alarmingly on the rise throughout the country. In the last couple of years, there's just been more and more domestic violence-related homicides. She claimed that people failed to survive this, not primarily due to lack of courage, but lack of proper awareness. They simply don't know where to go seek help. And as a result, when the finally escalates to a homicide, there's no documentation of the abuse the victim had already been through. And this stops the case from being strong. Asking questions going, what, what was happening in that household before that? You know, were, was there things happening and we just kind of missed it? She also claimed that domestic abuse doesn't always have to be physical and can be psychological as well. So she urged people to ask their close ones about domestic relationships and compare them with their situation especially if they were facing controlling behavior. Marissa's family hopes that domestic abuse victims will seek help when they face They want people to take lessons from this case and stay alert, and they hope that Marissa's death will help save many lives around the world. So, what did you think of the case? Do you think Marissa should have informed his family about her financial stress and reluctance to be in the relationship with Franklin. Do you believe she should have taken a calmer approach to breaking up with Franklin? Let us know in the comments below. Thanks for watching the video. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe to our channel.